it is a wonderful time to be a fan of skateboarding games. After we all endured the great skate drought of the 2010s that occurred after the release of Skate 3, the rains have finally come back to the lands, and nature is healing. This all started a couple years back in 2020 when we got the Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 remasters, which was dope in and of itself, but then after that came Skater XL in the same year, and now Session in 2022. And looking forward, we can anticipate even more releases with Skate Story dropping soon, alongside the holy fucking grail of modern sports games, Skate 4. The game that the internet bitched into existence. Even older games, like Skate 3. This fucking 12 year old game is having this, like, revengeance-esque resurgence in popularity. My YouTube feed is constantly getting clips like, this is what 16 trillion hours of Skate 3 looks like, and uh, have you ever seen this many flips off of a Skate 3 ramp? Let's try to count how many flips together, everybody! Oh, that was a lot of flips! I have not seen that many flips in Skate 3! Like and subscribe! Like, really though, look at this lineup. Things have literally never been this good for skating games. That being said, we're here today to talk about only one of these five games, that being the recently released middle child right here, Session. And boy howdy is this game fucking sick! <laughs> Okay, but why though? Why should you buy Session? The answer is simple, my friends, because it is the best skate sim that has ever existed. Let's talk about how that is. Alright, we're gonna start with this game's controls, because that's what it's all about here, but in order to do that, we have to rewind back 15 years to 2007, when Skate blew the motherfucking doors off of all skateboard-adjacent game design with their incredibly innovative flick it system. The flick it control system is how you execute tricks in Skate. You flick the right stick in various formations to do the tricks you want. While this is essentially just another way of inputting button prompts to activate canned animations, just like in the Tony Hawk games, the flick it system made you feel so much more like you were skateboarding than any of these Mortal Kombat looking ass button inputs ever could. With a controller's stick, you could simulate scoops and pops and the precision of skateboarding much more tangibly than ever before. It was genuinely the biggest innovation in the history of skateboarding games, right after Tony Hawk's fighting game-esque button inputs from the original Pro Skater. Yes, there was some stuff that came before that, but we're talking about the 3D stuff here. So, in terms of how skateboarding games have approached actually translating the sport to a controller, we started with the face buttons in 99, then we moved on to using the right stick to more accurately simulate board movement with Skate in 2007, and now we reach today, where we have evolved to using both sticks to control the board, which is Session's big innovation. In Session, your left stick controls your left foot and your right stick controls your right foot. Strap in folks, this shit's about to get confusing as hell! In order to demonstrate Session's controls, I'm going to describe one trick to you, and then describe how you'd execute that trick in all three of the aforementioned games. I feel like that'll help get across how Session plays. We're going to look at a complex trick for this example, something you don't just whip out on the daily, a 360 double kick flip. In Tony Hawk, to do this, you need to press X to ollie, then double tap square and hold left to spin and kickflip. Simple enough. In Skate, you'd use the right stick to flick down and diagonally upwards to kickflip, and then hold left on the left stick to spin. Not too bad. In Session, god damn, that shit's ridiculous. In Session, if you wanted to do a 360 double kickflip, you would need to hold down on the right stick to get ready, then flick the left stick to the left to start the kickflip, and begin holding the right trigger to begin spinning. And then at the proper time, milliseconds into the kickflip, you have to flick downwards on the right stick to catch the board with your back foot, all while continuing to hold the right trigger until you land at the correct angle. That's... stupid. But it's amazing. The fact that this series of inputs systemically works in real time is like fucking magic. And that is exactly what's happening here, by the way. Session is a systems-driven skateboarding game, as opposed to being more animation-driven, like Tony Hawk or the skate games before it. What I mean by animation-driven is that, in Skate or in Tony Hawk, every time you enter a trick input on your controller, you get the same animation. 
you don't control the minutia of how the board pops or flips or spins. You just input the burial cake flip and the game spits you out one of the several handmade burial cake flip animations that it had pre-prepared. This is how both of these two games operate, which is not bad by the way. These two games are motherfucking classics for a reason, but Session does it different. In a systemic way, that's really exciting. The point I'm getting to is this, where all skating games that aren't Session rely on replaying the same exact animations every time you input a trick, Session instead calculates your board movement with physics and systems. Session takes into account everything about your button inputs and simply hands you back the results. And if you did all the steps of the trick right, you'll land it, and if you didn't, well, no dice. Session factors in how long you hold down the pop, how fast you flick or scoop, the precise angle that you flick at, the direction your body's facing when you trick, which foot you use to catch. All these little details of your button inputs are calculated in real time and change how the tricks look. And it results in no two attempts of any given trick ever coming out the same. And that's like, that's just real fucking skateboarding at that point, right? I'd argue that Session is the only actual skateboarding sim video game ever made, because it's actually doing the simulation part of that title by quantifying tricks via external factors, like the ones I just listed off, where every other previous skate game relied on repeating the same handmade animations. Also, I just brushed over another feature that I should probably talk about. There's one more revolutionary feature that Session has, one more ace up its sleeve that sets itself apart from the other skating games. And that, my friends, is... It's not very exciting when I show it like that. The manual catch setting is what I'm talking about here, and it is fucking sweet. To put it overly simply, there are three parts to a flip trick. The pop, the flip, and the catch. You can pop and flip your trick till the cows come home, but if you don't actually land on the board, stop that bitch from spinning so you can hit the ground rolling, all is for naught. Enabling Session's manual catch setting means adding that catch into the gameplay loop by adding an extra input requirement for all tricks. That input being down on either one of the sticks at the peak of the trick in order to catch your board with either one of your feet so you can land properly and keep rolling. This is such a simple addition, but it's something no other skating game has asked of the player, to my knowledge. This design decision of including this manual catch setting alongside the choice of using two sticks instead of one to systemically control the player's feet, these are both tied for being the coolest new feature in a skateboarding game in nearly two fucking decades since the creation of the Flick It system back in 2007. Both of these additions change the motherfucking game and make Session more challenging, rewarding, realistic, and immersive than any other skate game out there. The wonderful animation of the skaters really helps with that immersion as well. Like, look at this shit. At the moment, some of the animation is still a little stiff or janky or video gamey, like the power slides, especially when compared to how buttery smooth they've been looking at Skate 4. So there is still room for improvement and many more layers of polish across the board. Ho ho! But even now, to my eye, this game includes the most realistic and believable skate animations I've yet seen. And on top of all of this, on top of the breadth of the core systems I've already described, the amount of tweakable options at your disposal is completely fucking bug nuts insane. Just like serial killer now. insane. Push force, flip speed, low pop height, high pop height, foot breaking friction. All of these minor details are adjustable to truly customize the way your character controls and skates. And it's just as amazing as it is overwhelming. There are lots of metrics to adjust and switches to flip in these options, and Session doesn't give you nearly enough help in navigating these menus. But as with every aspect of this game, if you're willing to sit down and figure it out, the results are deeply rewarding. You could also just ignore most of these options too, which is what I do. Here's my preferences setup if you want to peep it real quick. It's nothing special, but I don't know. It's how I play the game. Here you go. So you may be wondering. All this systems-driven trick stuff. These 10 can billion customizable options. Does it result in some jank? Yes! Sure fucking yes it does. It really, truly, it absolutely fucking does. But that jankiness, that endearing little splash of jankiness, is 1000% outweighed by the insanely ambitious and comprehensive system at play here. The way Creature Studios has recreated the weight and feel and impact of skateboarding is completely unparalleled in modern video games. I'm not even sure if Skate 4 is gonna top this at any point either. It seems like they're basically just doing Skate but more over there, and while that is exactly what everybody was asking for, and I'm hyped as hell for the arcade fun of it all, it's also nothing new. This feels fucking new. It goes inward and gets more complex, as opposed to going outward and becoming more accessible. Nothing wrong with either one of those angles, but I think I personally dig Session's take on the subject matter just a bit more. You also can't do impossibles in Skate. You can do impossibles here.
Bro, I've played this game for 50 hours. I have zero achievements. It's that kind of game. I spent 30 fucking minutes on one lip the other day, just doing basic ass bullshit. The core systems that govern how you flip tricks and rip lips here are so engrossing and dynamic and expressive and so endlessly entertaining that you'll get stuck in like an obsessive loop of happening up on a spot and just trying to land this one trick over and 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 that session is the best thing ever, because that feeling you're seeing on screen right now is the absolute purest essence of skateboarding. The devs at Creature have managed to distill the viscerally satisfying feeling of landing a trick more powerfully than ever before, which is just about as ringing an endorsement as I could possibly give of this skateboarding game. It's not a flawless experience, mind you. As I said, it is a little buggy, a little funky, and it will likely remain that way forever to some extent because goddamn, the systems that drive this game are complicated as fuck. I cannot imagine what's happening behind the scenes here, math and coding wise. I don't, I, I, I don't even want to think about it. But regardless, to me, the jank that results from these complicated systems is perfectly acceptable. In fact, it's beautiful in its own way. Video games are art. This is art. I'll fight you about this. Like Skate 3 before it, the core gameplay of Session is so rock solid that it's easy to ignore the jankiness around the edges and even find it endearing. Like, I wouldn't have my Skate 3 any different than this. This is what that game is, and it's a beautiful disaster. In Session, your tricks won't look perfect all the time, partially due to your own failings, but also partially due to the fact that it's a fallible video game. However, that botched trick is just more reason to go back again and try to get the perfect take. And isn't that fucking goddamn skateboarding? One last thing before we move on. Simply for transparency's sake, I feel like I gotta mention that Session is a game exclusively about street skating. There's a little bit of freestyle stuff, but no verse, and that's probably Session's biggest shortcoming when compared to other games in the genre. Truly, the tiniest ramp will send this game into goddamn conniptions. Apparently Vert was on the roadmap at some point in the past, but I only found out about that via a dev update that mentioned it was being cut, so for me it was sort of like a Oh no! Anyway, last week- kind of moment. If Creature could add Vert to Session, that'd be amazing. If they could add even more types of board interactions to allow me to get exponentially more experimental and expressive with my skating, that'd be awesome too. A game that allows that degree of creative expression is the motherfucking dream, but that's asking a lot. Especially of a team of just nine developers. God, the talent on that team is stunning. The fact that nine people principally put this game together just wows me to no end. Everyone on that team should be massively proud of their work. Besides kick flips, shove it, stray flips, and near death experiences, what else does Session have to offer? Not much, but that's fine. Nobody came to skate for the story. If you did, well, I'm sorry, I didn't. I remember there was a dude behind the camera. Uh, Get your back. He, he yelled a lot, I liked him. But first, let me just tell you a couple of pointers. Number one. Don't talk too much, people don't like that. Look, you and I both know that we're not playing these games for some intricately crafted Last of Us narrative. We're here to skate. We're here to watch motherfuckers fall and bonk their heads and laugh like cavemen. <laughs> <laughs> Only time anyone went to a skate game for the story was that one Tony Hawk that was all about getting your own big titty goth GF. Or the one where you got betrayed by the most villainous, villainous character in all of gaming. What was this motherfucker's name? Ralph Ske is it Sk Skinny Skinny Jimmy? Eric. Eric, that's what it was. I, I didn't have to look that up. Eric Sparrow? God damn, that is an evil ass name. This bald head ass a motherfucker is one of the most despicable villains in video game history, if you didn't know. The Pantheon's like, you got like Darth Vader, Dracula, David from The Last of Us, and Ralph, the guy who like, stole your babe or something. <laughs> what did he do, did he steal my sponsors, was that it? I know I did a flip over a helicopter, bro, that's what I know. I don't even remember what this dude does. I just know I, I feel this visceral hatred when I see his face. Like when I see him, I just wanna go. Uh oh, one is, <clears throat> Session Story does not have an Eric Sparrow. It does not have a silver bullet feature or character that sets it apart and makes it memorable like the underground games, but personally, eh. Like I said, I ain't here for the story, I'm here for the skating, and Session has that shit in spades. 50 hours of spades up in this bitch! No achievements, not a one. It does have a loose narrative to guide you through a series of tutorials, and in that, it can stand alongside other modern skate titles with similar features. 
Like, technically there is a campaign, but it's not there for much other than ticking a box and providing a somewhat guided tutorial of the game's dense mechanics, which is appreciated. To be honest, I haven't finished it, so maybe there is some big dramatic twist like eight hours in where Daywon's song stabs your mom or something, like you get started getting like Final Fantasy level. <laughs> cutscenes. Uh, somebody report back to me if I just didn't play long enough and missed that, and I will co I will delete the channel and commit ritualistic suicide. <laughs> God, I haven't written anything in five months and this is what I come up with. And just to clarify, to me, this lack of a campaign or any sort of narrative thrust, that's fine. I don't give a shit, but I just wanted to point it out in case it does matter to somebody when making a purchase. I mean, we're looking at this game as a whole, so why not bring it up? But hey man, shit is fine. Um... More than what Skater XL gave me at least, so we're good. This is an aside, but I bought that goddamn video game at launch on PS4 in 2020 and like, I was ripped off. I felt like I had been conned. $40 for like four maps, one of which I quite enjoy by the way, but then you got some busted ass skating mechanics with these magnetic ass little feet and a player customization menu that crashes every time I open it, and this takes up 37 gigabytes of my hard drive? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I guess they fixed it. Never mind. It's actually not that bad anymore. Nah. I like Skater XL. It's all right. Trade flips look good. If your trade flips look good, I like your skating game. These trade flips look good. Back to this other goddamn video game though, Session also has some cool customization options outside of its core gameplay. Lots of decks to buy, along with grip tape, trucks, wheels, etc, etc. You can also buy things and I think you can put them around the environment. I don't really know, I haven't actually tried that or figured it out yet really. No, I'm not a professional reviewer of people, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just some guy. You can slap some shit down, you can customize your board, and you can choose what corny shirt you're gonna wear, and you can play as a variety of real life skaters like Mark Appleyard, Manny Santiago, and- ah! You can also play as the Ribs Man. Ribsman, who I learned from this game, is a guy who skates in a morph suit. That's pretty sweet. They got Day One Song, who doesn't stab your mom. They got this dude, whole spaghetti head. Spaghetti head with the linguine legs. <laughs> This game's also got maps for days, by the way. Indoor and outdoor skate parks, cities, underground parking lots. There's an impressive selection of realistically rendered real life and fictional urban environments to choose from, all of which look fan fucking tastic. On PC, with the settings cranked up, even in early access, these levels can look damn near photorealistic. The first map, the New York map, specifically the Chatham Towers section, is now one of my favorite video game skate maps bar none. Right up there with the school from Pro Skater, the Philly neighborhood in Underground, and the Super Mega Park from Skate 3. This place right here is iconic as fuck. It's the default level you load into when you boot up the game, at least in early access when I'm writing this, and just by virtue of that, it is the comfiest location in the game, which is great because the map it's attached to is fucking massive. The amount of spots you could hit and lines you could construct across this one space is incalculable, and this is just one of like six other maps they got in this bitch. Some are bigger than others, of course, but my god, there is no shortage of spots to skate in session on release. And I'm sure Creature is gonna continue adding at least a few more as they update post-launch. In conclusion. In conclusion. Session's great. Bye, Session. No, it's fine. It's okay, it's fine. It's, all, it's fine, I'll do an actual conclusion. Skateboarding is an evolving art. Over the last decade, the boundaries of skating have been pushed by creative and talented people like Richie Jackson, Matt Tomasello, and Alison Rosendo, but as skateboarding itself has evolved, its interpretation in the digital space has stagnated. We were really getting somewhere around 2010 when Skate 3 came out, but as was illustrated by the intro, everything went dark after that. It has been 15 years since Skate came out and made everybody's goddamn heads explode. We have been waiting for the next step in skating games for quite a while now. And I'm happy to say that Session is that evolution. First came Tony Hawk. Then came Skate. Now comes Session. Go by Session now!